My lords, in the same statement, at page 181, the chairperson speaking to Kenyans says, with gratitude to God and the Kenyan people that gave me this opportunity. That is why I have now come directly to the Kenyan people because you deserve to know the state of the country's preparedness for the FPE, which I take to be the free presidential election. The fresh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, the fresh. Later down in the same statement, he says, you have a right to know the state of things in our beloved country. I have chosen to communicate directly, also to ensure that you do not get speculative ideas or outright false news from the fake news mongers. This is the chairperson speaking. In the following page of the same statement, it says, there are numerous calls for peace, but we all appreciate that peace without fairness and justice is an illusion of peace. It is the fountain, sorry, credibility is the fountain where true peace flows, flows from. The Bible tells us in 2 Samuel 23, 3, he that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God while the Quran reminds us in Quran 49, 49, that verily, Allah loves those who are just. The, commission, the chairperson is speaking to the environment. Going further on in the same statement at at page 184 the chairperson confirms and acknowledging the environment in which they're operating that a leading candidate who garnered more than 6 million votes has withdrawn from the race while it is right, while it is his right, we must think beyond him and think of the six million Kenyans who will feel disenfranchised by this action. He acknowledges that there are Kenyans who will feel disenfranchised. And then asks a question, do we just go on as if this withdrawal means nothing? Later on, in the same statement, he says, I want to state categorically that I shall not go down in history as the national returning officer that plunged the country into a further crisis than I had found it. It is already painful to be on record as the chairman of the IBC that presided over a presidential election that was nullified by the Supreme Court. And then he makes the critical points and admission. I have made this point num on numerous occasions to my colleagues at the commission. I have made several attempts to make critical changes, but all my motions have been defeated by a majority of the commissioners. Under such conditions, it is difficult to guarantee free, fair, and credible elections. I am convinced that without critical changes in any secretariat staff, we may not have a free, fair, and credible election. I ask the staff who have been adversely mentioned to step aside and allow the project team to function without interference. The chairperson, in his address to Kenyans, is admitting, one, there is political interference within 
the IBC. He's admitting to Kenyans are weak to the elections that he cannot guarantee free and fair elections. Further, further on in the same statement, he says, as a lawyer, I cannot continue to be pushed by majority commissioners to accept legal opinions that serve partisan interests and are not grounded in the Constitution or the law. In the list, this is intellectual dishonesty for which my professional training demands that I abhor. This is a public admission that there were partisan interests within the IBC by the, none other than the national returning officer. And then, further on, in that same statement, The chairperson says, once there is political agreement as a result of dialogue, when there is genuine commitment to let the commission work independently, when all the commissioners and staff truly commit to serving the country rather than partisan political interests, and when we work together to create a conducive environment for Kenyans to express their sovereign will, then I can truly be confident of having a credible presidential election. The chairperson is admitting publicly to Kenyans that the commission is not working independently. And of course, the question we should ask is, who is he blaming? Who is it that is not allowing the commission to work independently? He goes on to say, as the referee, I want to issue a stern warning to the players of this game on all sides that they should stop all attempts to interfere with the process. Failure to do this will result in consequences I have made up my mind to uphold the Constitution and the will of the people of Kenya, regardless of threats, intimidation, or pressure. My Lord, the purpose of reading this address to you was that the IBC itself and the chairperson publicly admit the challenges they have that they do not have independence, there is no impartiality, they are afflicted by partisan interests. And so that question cannot be said to be in contest when they have made public admissions. I had earlier said that this public address by the chairperson came after the resignation of Dr. Rosalind Akombe on the 17th of October, 2017. And the first respondent indeed admits in his response, at paragraph 48, that Dr. Akombe resigned from the commission and released a statement on 17th October 2017 in which she expressed her assessment of the commission's preparedness for the fresh presidential elections on 26th of October 2017. It's therefore important to see what Dr. Akombe had to say about the Commission's preparedness for the fresh election. My Lords, 
The press statement by Dr. Akombe is found in the affidavit in volume one of the bundle of documents supporting the petition. It is annexed to the affidavit of the first petitioner. It's at page 81, marked NM14. And this is what Dr. Akombe had to say. For many months now, I have questioned my role as a commissioner at the independence, at the indi sorry, for many months now, I have questioned my role as a commissioner at the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, but I have soldiered on hoping that we could collectively find a way of addressing the crisis our country faces. Sometimes you walk, sorry, I have agonized over the decision to leave my committed IBC field staff and my country. My decision to leave some of you will, sorry, my decision to leave the IBC will disappoint some of you, but it is not for lack of trying. I have tried the best I could do given the circumstances. Sometimes you walk away, especially when potentially lives are at stake. The commission has become a party to the current crisis. The commission is under siege. This is an admission, a clear statement of the presence of violence affecting the work of the commission.